Hey, it's Cole Cabana, professional wrestler, semi-professional comedian. You're watching Ambi. Thanks. Hey, everybody. It's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Colt Cabana. Hello. What do you mean our interview? It's just your interview. <laughs> My interview. Yeah. I'm claiming it. Okay. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. How are you? I'm awesome. Just thank you so much for joining me. That's great. Being awesome is uh, it's a bold it's pretty, claim. It's a pretty good spot to be in. So that nothing is bad in your life. Not nothing. right now. I mean, no. I got some bad stuff. <laughs> And I just, that's why I said I'm doing maybe, all right. Well, maybe not dive into that. Yeah. No, I don't want to, but I wouldn't sit here and claim I'm awesome. But you saying you're awesome. I don't awesome. have much to whine about right now. Okay. Good for you. It's an exciting day because we are here at Smash Wrestling where you're going to face Scotty O'Shea. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about the match? Uh, I'm feeling. I have feelings. But a lot of those are just from other stuff that's pending up in my head. <laughs> and yeah, so, I, it, you know, this is a... I'm on the road for the next 10 days. I'm not going to be home. And so, like, this is, you know, kind of like, it's not like, I don't want to say it's like another match, but, you know, this is this is kind of my life. So it's a match in the series of just long road days. But, like, it's what I live for. It's what I love. And so uh, it's my debut at Smash, which I'm yeah. super excited about. And I've been hearing about for years, especially from my friends, Chris Hero and Matt Cross. And they're like, Smash is the best. And I was like, oh, great. Sounds amazing. And then I'm sitting at home not at Smash, and now I'm finally at Smash. So uh, to be able to wrestle Scotty, you know, who I've known for a long time, and uh, I, I think should be a good match, and uh, I'm excited about it. That's contributing to one of the reasons I'm feeling awesome, your Smash debut. Yes, I'm smashing it. <laughs> We're in London tonight, and you have these amazing Colt Cabanada shirts, kind mm -hmm. of repping and playing to your Canadian audience. Mm -hmm. You pretty much threw everything stereotypically Canadian on mm -hmm. those shirts. How did you, how did you, you come up with that? Are you going to put a graphic on the shirt up Oh, there? yeah, we'll pop that up. Okay, because it's, I only sell them in Canada. Okay. I don't sell them on my website. I, whenever I, because I tour... I'm on the road like 150, 200 days a year. And so when it's just for when I tour Canada, I will sell these Colt Cabanada t-shirts. And I, I don't know, I must have been, I'm a big player of words. I like to play with words. I like puns. I kind of, it's, I, I don't know, I enjoy that. So Cabanada just like. Made sense. Made sense. Popped in my head. And then I was like, oh, you know, maybe a t-shirt. And then, yeah, I, I think um, the um, the Mackenzie brothers kind of popped in my head. Do you know who they are? No. Oh, you're so young. <laughs> oh my God. Fill me in. Um, what's now? Because now I'm gonna forget the movie. Uh, it's from SCTV, and then they made a movie. It's just all a Canadian movie. It's Rick Moranis and Dave T and Dave Thomas, which is called Strange Brew, which I just thought of, and the cameraman didn't whisper it to me in my ear behind the camera. <laughs> um, Strange Brew, yeah. And so, like, it, it, please go watch that. It's the most Canadian movie of all time. Okay. And then just all these ideas. And then I thought about all my travels, and, and then you think about, yeah, like, you know, I... I, I like I remember being in Newfoundland and like them saying we were traveling all over like uh, we might hit a moose and then I got really upset because we never saw a moose and then the Tim Hortons and just all to do and I was like oh that's fun and it's like it's very stereotypical but I think the the fun part is like the American putting it in the stereotypical yep. right like if it was a Canadian person doing it it'd be like come on that'd be me like french fries and um, you know cheeseburgers on a, a USA shirt but I think there's something <laughs> to an American doing that on a t-shirt well, you brought up humor as mm. you were talking about the movie there. H uh, U M O U R to you. Exactly. Yeah. Nice catch there. Mm, thank you. <laughs> Which leads me to my next question: comedic wrestling. That is what you tackle. That is what you are fantastic at. Mm. How did you decide to take that route into comedic wrestling? So it does differ from your normal wrestling. Was there a certain comedian wrestler that made you want to do that? Well, there's not a lot of comedian wrestlers out there, and that's one of the reasons why I realized it would be so fun to, to tackle, as you say. Uh, weirdly, that I was a a college football season star for one season and I would say star I was known as the worst American rest, um, worst American college football player of all time in my head I was literally on the lowest on the depth chart at Western Michigan University registered as a freshman but um, yeah like no one was doing it and then when you look back in the in the annals of kind of wrestling like Les Kellett and Cat Weasel a lot of the stars of the UK scene in the 60s and 70s were comedic wrestlers but if you look at American, like what people would think is like comedic wrestlers like Junkyard Dog or, or Jimmy Valiant or even maybe Dusty Rose to, to a quite a, a little bit of an extent, they weren't known as comedic wrestlers. They were just kind of wrestlers with a lot of character or pizzazz. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to kind of be somewhere in the middle of that, of be a wrestler with character and pizzazz, but then also really, really dive into the humor of it. And I was wrestling probably about five or six years. 
uh, as a regular wrestler. And then I, I kind of did something. I did a thing with AJ Styles where uh, like he hit the ropes and I just stuck my foot out and I tripped him. And I just got this crazy laugh. And I was like, that's the loudest reaction I've got in my whole career. And it wasn't from a crazy move. It was from tripping a dude and getting a laugh. <laughs> and that's kind of one of the first things that kind of sparked like, oh, this is something I want to pursue. This is something I want to do. Because, you know, you hear as wrestlers, you know, do what you are, what you're comfortable as. You know, like Steve Austin was like a stone cold dude, right? And, you know, Coco Beware, love birds. I just made that up, but it sounded right. And, uh, <laughs> and so for me, like I'm a natural, I like to think a witty comedic dude. And so for me to implement it into my wrestling, it made a lot of sense. You've shared before how you've played everywhere from fat camps to dirt roads in India as mm -hmm. far as performing. So where would you say is one of the weirder spots you've taken your craft? Um, well, I, uh, I, I've, in Canada, I've done some weird ones in Canada, um, including, God, I did this tour of like Saskatchewan and like all over like those regions. The Inuits are what we used to call, I can't say it, the, the one, the, they build the igloos, those guys. You can't say that anymore. I didn't know that before I went up there, but now I've learned I feel like a better person. Iqaluit is, is, is the, it's an, none of it. There's so many provinces and, and things I don't even know about. But this was wild. And it was, it was, at, it was summertime, so it was light out, 23 hours of the day. Um, a, uh, a 24 pack of water was like $55. And uh, it was like, it was just a world that I'd, I'd never known of or never been around. And it was so interesting to go up there and wrestle for, for the locals up there. It was interesting. It was wild. You mentioned before being a quirky and comedic person, and I have to agree because I listen to your podcast, oh, and okay. it is so interesting to listen to. Oh, thank I you. I really love tuning on SoundCloud. And I'm like, oh, I can just dive right into this, let it run. Uh, you've done over 340 of these. Mm -hmm. So when you pick your guests for who are going to be on your show, how do you go upon choosing them? Yeah, I've, I'm, so I was the first, really the first Wrestler to Wrestler podcast, and I started in 2010, and now it's kind of exploded. It's become a real big thing. But for me, it was always about having my friends on and it was just I knew that these these dudes were so fun and funny backstage and just like in these locker rooms we'd have these chats and I wanted to be able to kind of give everyone that insight and now like you know WWE released that thing about Sex Ferguson or Tex Ferguson like the Southpaw wrestling and everyone's like oh my god he's hilarious and that's like something not that I'm claiming but like the wrestlers we all knew that he's the funniest guy alive mm -hmm. for years and I felt like we were doing something wrong by not telling the world about these kind of people people like Luke Gallows and Cliff Compton and Sanjay Dutt and just all these guys that I love so I, I really it's just people my friends that I want to kind of expose to the world a little more and I feel I'm doing a service by by letting the wrestling fans know that there's so much more to these wrestlers than just what you see on TV if you could have any guest on the Art of Wrestling on mm -hmm. your podcast who would that guest be I feel I've had all you know like maybe you should rephrase that question Okay, how, how should I ask the question? Like, if you, if you have a guest that you haven't had on. Oh, okay. Right? Let's, let's, let's rewind. Mm -hmm. If you could have any guest that you have yet to have on, who would it be? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, all that work for nothing? I know. Give well, me something. I was actually stalling because I was trying to think of somebody, <laughs> um, but I couldn't get to it. <laughs> Robbie Brookside was a guy that, like, I wanted to have on. Um... And like it really didn't work out, and now that like WWE won't let any, I, I don't think, and I won't ask anyone in WWE. So like, it's kind of one of those weird things. The one person I really want on is, and I tweeted this a couple of months ago, is Tom Brandy, who used to play Salvatore Sincere, and uh, sometimes does the Patriot, which I don't think he uh, allegedly has the rights to. So, um, but he's like, you know, my show is like all about indie wrestling and the independent spirit, and he's like one of those like OG indie wrestlers, and he's still out there at like 55 or 50, selling buttons and stuff, and like he's just like six two, just like looks amazing, and like he's kind of like it's kind of like what I want to be in like 20 years so, so you have the button part down you, yeah. you posted the video of you doing uh buttons like an etsy mother i think you said y yeah like a real <laughs> etsy mom i'm out here making buttons and yeah and it's it's weird because i'm doing really well but there's just that spirit of me like when i wasn't doing well that's what i did to get by so it's kind of what i know so i'm a, not like i'm afraid to go away from like letting other people do my stuff or whatever it might be but it's just kind of that's what I know and that's how I know to make money and so that's kind of just how I like to do it. I'd rather I'd rather do it myself than I don't know than than you know have someone else do it, I guess. 
if I could if I can make a 13 <laughs> extra cents on the dollar. <laughs> the other cool thing about your podcast is the song of the day that's featured on them. Like yeah. I discovered Twiga from that, and nice. I, like now I've been just jamming to their band camp. So it's Good. really cool being able to get other bands from the podcast. Yeah, and I guess this makes sense on a music blog, exactly. right? Is uh, and I and I was um, I was featured. Uh, I forgot what New York magazine it was. Uh, I can't remember. Village Voice. Okay. Um, you know, like the top ten wrestling songs that you should know, or something like that. And yeah, because I've been doing it for seven years almost now. Is I've had so many, and I'm not really like that big of a music person, but I know that like, I've had the ability. But I love wrestling, so when someone's singing about wrestling, I love it. Or a wrestler singing about wrestling, <laughs> I love it. So I've had the ability to yeah play so many different people, and there are like B plus players and grill position, and uh, there's just so many. Um, the Razor Ramones, uh, uh, the Barbarettes, and there's just so many weird people that have just sent me their music, and I've been able to play, and I love the uh, the idea that I can play that. That's okay. Um, yeah, Twig, and they asked me to be in their video, and I uh, can't ask me to be in something on the weekend. That's when I wrestle, sadly. <laughs> I wish they would have filmed on a Wednesday in Chicago, but they didn't. I saw you were at South by Southwest, and actually were able to catch a bit of Weezer set. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, like it's not. I don't know. It's nothing I would have ever seeked out. But Weezer's great. It's. I mean, I'm not like a super fan of really anyone music-wise, but they're amazing. And and as a performer, I love the idea that I can watch somebody do watch somebody do something that they're great at. And and they were great. And South by Southwest was so much fun. It's kind of funny. Like I had all these hookups, but um, they had nothing to do with like a celebrity status or a wrestling status because I, I did my podcast there mm -hmm. and I wrestled in South by Southwest. I had a couple of friends, different friends from high school who like one worked for Vivo and one worked for Rachel Ray and like they were like, hey, you're at South by Southwest, come to this party. And then <laughs> like, yeah. And then next thing you know, I'm, I'm meeting Weezer and, oh, and, and uh, who else? De La Soul and I don't know, Chicano Batman, <laughs> people that are great. It was cool. It was really fun. <laughs> Who are some other bands that you've been digging lately? Not just ones you saw at South by, but just in general. Yeah, it's it's. I, I don't know. Like it's like I said, I'm not I'm not that much of a music person. Um, um I don't know. ICP. <laughs> I wrestle for them, so that's the only other musicians that I know. Well, I'm bad at a music blog. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And I, and I said, yeah, I should have said, sorry, I'm bad at a music blog. Yeah. 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 See, because I had to add that in. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just I listen to podcasts. OK. Uh, but I will say that I've been digging Song Exploder, which is an amazing um, podcast about songs. OK. I don't know if you ever heard that. No. I'll recommend Song Exploder, where they break down a song and a musician like breaks down how they made it and just kind of all the intricacies of the specific song. It's so good. And um, yeah, that's, so that would be my song rec recommendation. All right, very yeah. good. We, we got there. We got there, <laughs> barely. Then just to wrap everything up, is there anything you want to leave with all of the wrestling fans who will be viewing, all of your fans? Uh, well, if you're on the internet, um, head over to coltcabana.com and then you can listen to my, my podcast, The Art of Wrestling, on iTunes. And, uh, and I'm, I have a lot of stuff I put up on YouTube, so you're on YouTube maybe right now, so go over to, to some of my stuff on YouTube. And, <laughs> but oh, we'll pop a link up. Yeah. Right oh, there. And I made it, and, and maybe pop a link up for the, the trailer for Wrestling Road Diaries 3, Funny yes. Equals Money. And that's a documentary series that I've been doing. The first one was with Daniel Bryan before he went to the WWE. And you kind of got to see the life of an independent wrestler. The second one was Cliff Compton and Luke Gallows coming back from WWE and what it was like to be a WWE wrestler and wrestle uh, in front of 20,000 people and then wrestle in front of 100 people every weekend. And then this third one is dissecting comedy and wrestling, which is something that I don't think has ever really been done to this extent to my knowledge. And um, I'm so proud of it. Jack Edinger killed it. Jack Edinger, my director uh, and editor, who also is the video videographer for Fallout Boy, okay. um, music blog, yeah. And so I think he has a lot Tying of it yeah, he has a lot of Instagram followers. And I was like, how'd you get this many? He's like, the Fallout Boy people know to follow my Instagram because <laughs> I'm on tour with them. And so I was like, yeah. And it's kind of funny you get to see just how similar the wrestling and the music industry oh, is. That like they'll find one person who's connected to one person and then follow that person because maybe they get a glimpse of something that those people did. And it's super interesting. I just want to say thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome. And remember to everyone viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See you next time. Bye.